pretty good. Yeah. Man. Welcome to another episode of Jay Leno's Garage. Today we have two very special Corvettes. These are Callaway Corvettes. If you're not familiar with that name, uh, you know, back in the 70s and the 80s and even the 90s, when cars kind of came from the factory with 300 horsepower, maybe max, I think Corvette was maybe 350 was the most you could get. Uh, a guy named Reeves Callaway started a company back in 1977 to modify these cars, give them electric horsepower. And he became uh, a bit of a hero to those of us in the car world. Plus, he's from New England, where I'm from, so I, I kind of bonded with it a little bit there. And he would make all kinds of supercharged Corvettes and supercharged Alfa Romeos, which I'd never seen before. Just really, really cool stuff. And the company's got their 40th anniversary coming up pretty soon. And uh, these are some of their latest models. This is the Aero Wagon. I can't wait to read the comments. People will be furious. Then there'll be people who love it and have to have it. it it's, uh, he is nothing if not controversial. And his son, Peter's with us today. We'll meet Reeves in a little bit. Peter Calloway. Peter, come on in. Good to see you. Now, hey, your dad Jay, started the company you. in 77. You were born in 82. 82, right. It's hilarious. I missed a couple of years. I know, but I know. I, cause I remember reading about it when he was getting started and how exciting it was. Because back in the 70s, cars were pretty dull. I mean, even the early 70s, the most horsepower you could get in a Corvette was 190, I think is what it was, something right. like that. And your dad became a hero to all of us by modifying them and making them reliable and dependable, mm. which is really, because anybody can put a supercharger on something, right. you get it to work and operate properly. That's, that's the real key. So tell us what we have here. So you're involved in the company now as well. Yep. Yeah, cool, cool. Yep. Well, how cool is that having your, see, I wish my dad was a car guy when I was growing up. Well, to have your dad be Reeves Callaway, that is very cool. Now, this is the Aero Wagon. This is basically, is it a semi-stock Z06 is what this? This package here on the back? There's two things going on here. One is the Callaway engineered powertrain upgrades, which right. is, you know, the Callaway design supercharger gives the car 757 horsepower yeah. and See. 777 foot pounds of torque. See, I love that the Z06 comes stock with what, 640? 650, yeah. Oh, 650. I just love the Close. fact, well, that's not enough. I mean, right. you know, I remember when it was 190, well, that was awful, and then your dad would get 300 and four. Right. I remember when 400 horsepower was the end of the world, right. oh my God. Right. So now, like, 650 is not enough, so now you've got 700 and what, 50, well, 70? Yeah. yeah, but there's more to the story than just the power number right. as well. You know, we've got a very clever intercooler design in the supercharger, which pretty much takes the rise in inlet air temperature associated with supercharging out of the picture entirely. Yeah. So you're making that power, but you're making it lap after lap. Yeah. So yeah. It's a, there's a story behind the powertrain side of it as well. And as far as the aero wagon goes, you know, we've built a lot of different cars over the years, of course, that are, whether it's uh, a racing special homologation car, right. um, rebodied entirely. Uh, and when C7 Corvette came out, we said, you know, let's think of something that's unique that would change the look of the car entirely, mm -hmm. but not rebodying the whole car, because sure. frankly, that's very expensive, right. it's a lot of work. And the new car looks great. Right. So what can we do to do something that's uh, visually differentiating in the car? Right. And uh, is practical and is something that's frankly not and controversial. Dolphin. Controversial. The, the common deal is well, I will never watch your website again. Or oh, I just love what I have to have on. Bring I it mean, on. To me, the most exciting cars are ones that involve passion. You know, yeah. you design a Corolla and nobody goes crazy <laughs> and nobody goes says it's ugly. It's just it is. It's a very nice car you know but it doesn't you know when the viper came out it looks like a cartoon i hate yeah, this right. and other people had to have one you know and that's what i love I and mean, i can't wait to read the comments because people sure think, especially corvette you know the yeah. purists they'll be all over you oh yeah that's fantastic bring it on but you know the truth is all cars are pretty good these days right yeah. whether it's a low cost car right. or the highest performance car out there they're all very well developed so to do something different is what we said okay sort of in the tradition of coach built cars right. a shooting brake design was always something that was cool to us well the thing i like about over the years what you guys have done is this looks factory you know when somebody adds something onto an existing car you kind of go is that the new you bet you, um, you know panel gaps are wrong and i mean this looks like a factory car uh, you know how, how does the uh manufacturers respond are they uh, somewhat uh, apprehensive or they encourage it or they're, they're they're fine because uh, to them it brings someone that may not have been looking at a car otherwise. Right. So it's a plus sale in that case. Um, it's something special. It gives the brand attention regardless. And, um, you know, it's all good. 
And what did you drive to high school? I'm just curious. You know, I'm I drove sure. a, uh, yeah. so before Corvette, we were turbocharging BMWs, Volkswagens, right. Audis. And um, I, had, uh, I had found one of our old development BMWs. So right. I had a 323 gray market car yeah. uh, with no synchros left in the gearbox right. and it had been crashed 100 times. Yeah. And um, so that got me hooked on, on the whole thing. And uh, so that was, my, that was my daily driver. In high I mean, school. one of my favorites, just because it was so unusual, was the Alfa Romeo, uh -huh. uh, you guys supercharged that, which just seemed, when was that, about 19, in the 80s, I think? 84, uh, Yeah, and 85. that seems, that brought, because the, the biggest complaint, they just didn't have the horsepower. And now you had the styling, you know, and right. all that Italian coolness with a ton of horsepower. Mm -hmm. And I always thought that was one of the sexiest things you guys did. Because you always took things that nobody ever did before. And this is a classic example of that. It's, it's a... Uh, can we open this up? The yeah. See how much. It doesn't look like there's much, <laughs> much more space than the standard Corvette. It wouldn't be a little bit more, a little more height. Maybe, maybe a third set of golf clubs. Maybe a third set of golf clubs. You know, if, if you're playing with three sets of clubs, <laughs> you're probably not a real car enthusiast. And I've got to correct myself. I keep saying supercharging the Alpha, but it was turbocharging. Turbocharging where you got, you know. Everything is supercharged now. All of these Eaton blowers, and I keep saying supercharged. I meant to say, so I'm sure people will comment long before I make the correction now, but, but you, it was turbocharging Corvettes early on mm -hmm. and, uh, and, uh, and turbocharging Alphas and BMWs. Uh, you didn't get into supercharging a little bit later, right? Yeah, I'd say the early 2000s. Okay. When the fifth generation Eaton Roots type rotor pack right. came about, and it was actually a very very good option. We had to take a hard look at going away from turbocharging. And the main driver for that was, uh, first of all, the durability was second to none. Right. 100,000 miles, you don't touch the thing. Yeah. Um, packaging was much better in the small block configuration. Uh, emissions compliance get tougher and tougher. Right. So installing turbochargers in different manifolds and changing the catalyst location was essentially a non-starter. Right. You know, all Callaway cars are 50 state compliant. Right. So supercharging, you're working entirely on the cold side of the engine, um, so there's a lot less thermal stress on all the components as well. And frankly, driving a supercharged car felt like a big displacement, naturally aspirated. Well, yeah, because you've got power all, all the, time. the time. Yeah. yeah. And aside from that, it's uh, when just cruising, the supercharger only requires about a third of a horsepower right. going down the freeway. Right. So a fuel economy was essentially the same as stock. Oh, very cool. So those are all the reasons that Callaway ended up going from turbo systems to supercharging. Now you guys manufacture this whole piece as well. Right? Yeah, and it's actually, you think of the hatch, factory. you think of the hatch on the car, but then it's actually quite a few pieces that make the whole assembly. Yeah. You know, it's the inner structure, it's the outer skin. Um, to make the visual transition from the stock roof line back, it's also a new halo bar ahead of the hatch. Right. Uh, and then of course it requires uh, a different looking spoiler that's more integrated with the aerodynamics. And what does it cost well. to turn the regular car into an aero wagon? All said and done, it's 15K. 15K on top of the right. Actually, that's yeah. not bad. I mean, a set of wheels and a few other things would yeah. turn you close to that. Okay. You know, as far as having a shooting brake built for you, yeah. I think that's a pretty good deal. And did we ever say shooting brake in America? That's sort of an English <laughs> thing. It sounds better than station wagon. It does. You know, I say a Corvette station wagon. So uh -uh. shooting brake, yes. My right. God, Nigel, let's go. You know, so it's very cool. But uh, and, you know, it looks great. I, I, it's funny. It, it looks factory to me. It doesn't. You know, it's it's certainly different. You know, and that's our goal with all aspects of what we do as a company is to be, you know, an OEM supplier quality and to not shortcut anything. But of course to um, do something that's unique and not just, you know, really separate us from the crowd. Now, how do you get uh, 650 is a lot of horsepower out of this motor? Right. Do you change the pulleys? Is it, are you in the motor? With no, we're actually replacing the factory supercharger. Okay. So instead of the 1.74 liter unit that it comes with, right. we're installing the 2300 cc. Right. Unit. <laughs> yeah. um, we're also running a little bit more manifold pressure. Right. It's interesting though that we're making more manifold pressure at a slower rotating speed of the supercharger because of the displacement. Now, if, how does it work? Do I, I don't buy this from the dealer, I buy my Corvette and they bring it to you. You can actually, we, oh, can you we, have, an, we have a, a group of authorized Callaway Chevrolet or GMC Cadillac dealers. Right. And you can get a finished Callaway Corvette 
right from them. Really? Okay. Or you can order one and have it configured exactly the way you'd like it, shipped to us. You can fly in, take delivery at our factory, drive it home. Okay. Um, so so your warranty, you, you have, still have a factory warranty with it? Yeah, absolutely. And that's, that's one thing that really separates Callaway from anybody yeah, else. Yeah, that's really... That's and because, that goes back to you know. the, the 80s when we were working with Chevrolet on the twin turbo Corvette. Uh, we've maintained a warranty relationship with them. And uh, Callaway cars are fully covered and supplemented by a Callaway warranty as well. Right, right. So if there's anything that's in um, question, it'll be taken care of. No, that's terrific, because I know people who have modified Mustangs, and you know, as soon as the factory opens, get out, get out. Get You're right. <laughs> so and we're, you can't expect people to warranty work that's not there. Absolutely. You know? Well, so cool. after many years of building things to a specification rather than trying to do crazy one-offs, yeah. you know, we have a very good relationship. And uh, frankly, the cars are so well built to start. Yeah. They're very reliable. Well, it kind of begs the question, why don't they do that from the factory? Or maybe they'd like to do it over a five-year period, roll out more horsepower. Next year, it'll have 700 versus 650. You're right. You know. Okay. Well, I think it's... Um, I can't imagine what it's like working for a corporation that large, but the nice thing about being with a small company is that we can make those decisions and get through them very quickly yeah. and do something that we want to do with no pushback from anybody else. Right, right, okay. And there's no, uh, well, well, these transmissions are strong enough to take. Yeah, we're still operating within, within yeah. the torque rating of the gearboxes. Okay. And, and this one is different how? This is, no styling changes to this, correct? Yeah, we brought this primarily as a before and after right. comparison for the Aero Wagon conversion. Um, so this is a great example of what you would find at your Callaway dealer as we're ready to go um, right. with the 757 package on a Z06. You can do it as a coupe or a convertible or as a manual or an automatic. It doesn't matter. How does this affect the Aero? I mean, this is a 200 mile an hour car and obviously the factory yeah. does the whole aerodynamics here with this buttress and all that kind of stuff. Uh, how do you... Uh, oh. You know, it should actually be less draggy, and both in part to the new spoiler design, yeah. um, but also with less taper off the back, it should be a lower coefficient of drag. Yeah, yeah. So why don't you let me know how fast it goes? Yeah, well, you know, it's one of those things. Some people love it, and that's, some people right. will go, no, that's, that's got to be exactly as it left the factory, right. you know. Uh, and, you know, you don't really notice it at first, so it's not like, uh, you know, <laughs> like you put a big... Uh, box in the back. Sure, yeah, right. Yeah. I want to keep it tasteful, right? Yeah, yeah. And obviously you have to trademark Aero Wagon. Right. right. Yeah, yeah. Because I remember, you know, um, Cadillac had that four-door wagon with a stick, which I thought was great. People love that, right. Yeah, but they, for some reason it just, it, it didn't sell. I don't know why that was. It just wasn't popular. You're right. The enough. specialty niche products sometimes yeah, don't get yeah, the volume. Yeah, yeah. So how, how new is this? Is this brand new or has it been out for a while? This has been out for a couple of hours. Oh, just a couple of hours? <laughs> wow. Well, we launched the, the car we, um, uh, basically at the beginning of this month, and it's, uh, it's available now. Now, these, uh, are these both automatics? This one's an auto, this one's a stick. Oh, okay, okay. And what is the auto? Is it the seven speed? Yeah. Eight speed auto, oh, eight seven speed, auto, seven so speed manual. manual, right. right. We like, from an engineering and development standpoint, you know, for the whole car's consideration, mm -hmm. we like to have both cases. Yeah. Both for performance validation as well as sort of worst case scenario for cooling systems and loads and such like that. Well, this is why I love Corvette, because even with your modifications and upgrades, you're still a third the price, of, not a third, but a fifth the price of Pagani or LaFerrari or any, you, you know, these cars all have 750 horsepower now. Right. And you're right there, you know. That's my favorite thing. Whenever I watch these uh, shootouts with car and driver or whatever, people show. So it's Porsche and Corvette. You bet. Because, you know, people ride them hard. You fix them with a hammer. Boom, you put them back on the road again. You know, I mean, I meet so many exotics that have, that are 10 years old and have 1,200 miles. Mm -hmm. And right. then I meet Porsche guys and Corvette guys that have 180,000, 250,000, you know, because yep. it's a complete opposite way of thinking. You're the right. more miles it is, the better it is, you know, and you can, these are so incredibly well built. It really is the bargain of the century. And how much is just the mechanical package without the aero wagon? It's about eighteen thousand. Eighteen thousand for the power package, and then you know the the, the double D exhaust system is an option. Right. But, uh, the manual gets a short throw shifter. It's a very nice addition. Okay. 
Um, Any suspension changes to this one? Uh, no, in this case, these cars are both Z06 package with the Z07 option, right. and it's got the selective ride control, and it's very well integrated with the car. So no, no suspension changes. Um, this car has our forged wheel package in black chrome, so it's a couple pounds lighter per corner. Right, right. Still utilizing the Michelin tire. Well, let's, where's your dad? He's around here. Where is he? Where is he? Reeves, come on in here. <laughs> oh, no. Good to see you, Jay. So you got your son running the gig here now? Thank goodness. Yeah, Somebody's ready to do it. And you're mm -hmm. sitting by the beach with a mint julep or something? I am. Yes. Just don't tell anybody. That's well, I must admit, you, 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 was all, you were always one of my heroes when I was a kid because, A, New England. There wasn't a lot in New England. And, and, and you were modifying American cars, which I liked at the time like the Corvette, but you guys do everything now. Mustang, what, BMW, everything, right? Actually, you know, this is our 40th year right. since going into business. Right. It's our 30th year of being the world's smallest specialist dealing with the world's largest car corporation. So 30 years of working with GM. Yeah. You know, they hired us to do this in 1987. Oh, is that right? They okay. did. And here we are standing here 30 years later. That's been a very interesting, uh, uh, journey. Right, right. No, it's really fantastic. And I, as I was saying, the one that really I, I thought was fascinating was the turbocharged, keep saying supercharged, the turbocharged Alfa Romeo. Where did the impetus come for that? What were you thinking? What was Did, did somebody say, hey, I want you to turbocharge this for me, or did it, did it emanate with you guys? Were you working at Gus Andre? No, I used to work at Foreign Motors in At Boston. Foreign Motors West. Yeah, Foreign Motors West right. and Foreign Motors in Boston. Exactly. Right. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so it was an Alpha dealer, right? Or were they? No, we weren't Alpha. We were foreign cars. We okay. Had, we had Peugeot, Bentley, Mercedes-Benz, Citroën, and uh, a, a kit car called the Squire. <laughs> we, we, had, we had every kind of we oddball. Equal fun, opportunity. But we didn't have Alfa Romeo. But, you know, back in the day, that's what it was. You were just a foreign car dealership because nobody sold right. enough Exactly. You know, European cars, you had to have three or four different marks on the floor. So here's what happened. Do you remember the Maserati B-Turbo? <laughs> yes, sadly. Yeah, sadly. The only exactly. good thing about it was the clock. It had a beautiful clock on the dashboard. <laughs> when the rest of the car wasn't running, you could watch that. Well, these, these poor guys were the newcomer into America at right. that point, and Alpha uh, was getting their lunch eaten by Maserati B-Turbo sales. Right. And Alpha called us and said, oh. uh, 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 can we make a quickly turbocharged version of our car that will perform as well or better than the Maserati B Turbo? So 12 months later, together, we both rolled out this uh, specialist production version of the GTV6, and lo and behold, it was quick, yeah. it stayed in one piece, and Alpha was poised to yeah. do well in America. You know what happened then? They left the country. They left the country. Yeah. <laughs> Were they, was, that a, was that a fuel injected car? Yeah. Because I remember the Bi Turbo was carbureted, right? Exactly. And it was just the stupidest. It was, it was awful. Oh, it was a horrible car. <laughs> had this beautiful leather interior and this beautiful clock in the dashboard. Everybody marked about what a nice clock it was. It was very detailed, you know. But that was the only thing that, that was that, running. That, that's so you could time the tow truck when he was yeah. on the way. Yeah, you could hear the <laughs> clock running because the engine wasn't. So when you're stuck by the side of the road, you could hear. <laughs> oh, it's very interesting to hear that. Cool. I mean, that probably did more to ruin Maserati's reputation in America yeah. uh, than almost anything. It took them 30 years to recover. Oh, just unreliable. And they sold a bunch. <laughs> and then in the first year, you could get them for, God, 10 cents on the dollar. Yep. I mean, you couldn't give them away. They couldn't meet emissions. They were running too lean. I mean, it's crazy. I'm glad you brought up the point, though, because Alpha, in a way, is responsible for Callaway and Corvette. Yeah. Here's how it worked. We produced the first 30 cars for Alpha. Right. They went out the door to great review. Alpha went home, closed the door, and forever left the United States until today. Yeah. One of those Alphas wound up in the General Motors Proving Grounds war room as a sample car. Right. And based on a little two and a half liter, 250 horsepower, uh, 2,800 pound sedan with front engine and rear gearbox, the guys at Corvette called us and said, how did you do that? Yeah. Because uh, it was emission compliant and it was quick. Right. And they said, would you be interested in doing some turbocharging work on the Corvette? Oh, that's fascinating. See, and, see I just assumed a guy bought one of these, didn't like the power, 
brought it to you and it was an old Lime, Connecticut. Old Lime, Connecticut. Uh, you guys put a turbocharger in it and, and boom and sent him on his way. I didn't realize this whole backstory. That's fascinating. You know, our objective was always to try to get that relationship to yeah. be a specialist for a brand. You know, like all of the other great specialist cars that you've got here. Yeah. You know, a, a, an Abarth to a Fiat right. or a, a Lister to a Jet. Well, let's show what we're talking about. Well, that's very cool. That's a, that's a great history lesson. So, now so you, thank God for Alpha. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Have, you, have you still got one of those? No. Oh, <laughs> uh, so they only did 30 cars. Yeah. How many of them are still around? Do you hear from the owners? Or probably, they... probably about 29 of them. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. It was the V6. But that was a good motor, too. It was it? a great motor. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We were scared to death yeah. that the motors would fail. Yeah. And they said, why don't you run our durability dyno test? It's called the Autostrada del Sol. Oh, okay. <laughs> Which is the highway that goes from Rome to Milan. Right, right. right? And uh, after running that dyno test and using up several thousand gallons worth of gasoline, yeah. the motors were fine. Wow. And we said, wow, that's a surprise. Well, pretty cool. Pretty cool. Well, that's a great history lesson. You know, let's take this one for a ride and see what kind of looks we get on the road. Now send us comments, tell you what you think of the Aero Wagon Pack. I'm curious to hear it, because you know, you know, you're just going to have these people oh, yeah. that just get so mad. You get the purists, uh, and then you get the people that, that love that we're doing something to break that. Right? You know, it's funny, I always drive a Corvette uh, manual car. Mm -hmm. You know, this is the first time I've really driven an automatic. I mean, it's very nice, I still prefer the, the, uh, the manual, but this is probably faster, isn't it? It's a tick faster, yeah. Uh, and I, I'm right there with you. I always prefer to have a manual, no yeah. matter what it is. But I credit the fact that they've actually got the automatic working really well. Yeah. You can take it to the track, you put it in drive, and you go. Is, is it a double clutch automatic? No, no. it's no. still a torque converter. Right. Okay. Um, traditional automatic, but the ratios are right. I feel right. Uh, it detects when you're driving aggressively, and it goes into a performance shift mode. Right. So it gets the downshifts right at the track. I mean, it's, it's actually pretty, yeah, pretty all right. So for consistency's sake, even if you're going to the drag strip, you know, or the guy's not as experienced, yeah, I think that's it's fine. And the paddles oh, work well. I like the guy. Well, I drive every day, so I have to have an automatic. Really, is it that much exercise? I, I mean, I don't, I don't let people use that excuse ever. Yeah, yeah. I said that's for me. It's something to do in traffic, right? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Work on matching my downshifts. I mean, Corvette solvers are the bargain of the century. I mean, it's just, so you got the same power as a, the big Lamborghini or even the uh, Pagani. Yep. You know, I and think you can drive it every day. Yeah, you can. And I think if you just take the price factor out of it, it's still a really nice yeah. car to be yeah. in every day. And people that have had the Porsches, the Lamborghinis, the Ferraris, you know, they're, they're now coming in the door because the C7 is right so much more of a factor for them. The mid-engine Corvette should be interesting. Think they'll do it? Huh? Think they'll do it? That means yes, by the way you're talking about. <laughs> you're, you know, don't play poker. You've got a terrible look. I can tell just the way you I, phrase the question. You already know the answer. I don't know anything. So you're, you're, you been, probably know more You've been told not to say anything, so you're going that way. But Oh, do you think they'll do it? You know they're going to do it. Like, hey, like oh, I they've don't know. Always, they've always said they're going to do it. Yeah. Right. They've been saying that since 57. Right. But, but now that Ford's got the GT out, well, they have to. It seems to make sense. Yeah. And that was just, that wasn't even Florida, that was just easing my foot on the throttle. Sure. Go. I mean, Corvettes have always been fast, but now they've got the handling and the brakes and everything else yeah. to go with it. You know, that's, that's the great thing about it. So this is the very first Aero Wagon, this it one is. here? Okay. Yep. Yeah, and it's interesting, this, it's also the very first part out of the molds. Right. And since everything's designed from the nominal CAD data, that we get from GM. Right. We know that by the time we cut all the tooling for the parts, that it's right on the central spec. Wow. As opposed to starting with some car off of a lot somewhere. Yeah, and that doesn't match. It might be yeah. to the left or the right of center. Yeah. It's, it's a great way to get through the process very quickly. 
type supercharger is it's so linear yeah you know if our target boost is about 14 psi at redline yeah. you know at 2500 you're making you know 85 percent of that you know, so it's a very linear pull even though this is not a dual clutch transmission it shifts very nicely Super you know fast. some european exotics i've driven with a non-dual uh dual clutch it, uh, I mean, it's a, it's a slam bang right. factor involved. It doesn't feel like quality. This feels yeah. like quality. Yep. This is the well, first automatic I don't mind driving. Yeah. Fast. Yeah. Very nice. You know, this roof is so solid. I forget that it actually comes off. Yeah. You, you don't take it off any... and stick it in the back. It's not a two-piece yeah. deal, is it? It's no. It's single. Five yeah. seconds. Yeah. Cool, let's try it. Yeah, we'll turn around up here. Okay, boy, well, just pop these. These all the way out. Okay. Let's get this guy. And the ones in the back. No, just the center piece here. Oh, just okay. One little button in the front there. Oh, wait, the button. Oh, oh there we there. go. Okay. Let me get, okay, Ooh. hold on. All right, there we go. That lifts off. Yep. Watch it. Get the hatch ready. There's a holster in the back for it. Probably easier to go one way with it. Yep. Yeah, there we go. Well, it doesn't weigh anything. No, all carbon. And then, Plus, uh, I'm incredibly strong. <laughs> <laughs> and then set the front down. See those hooks there? Uh, yeah. Yeah, that's good. Little, uh, right over it. All right. Oh, a little oh. pocket for it. Oh, I see. Feel a catch. Then just push the rear. Oh, look at that. So simple, a child can assemble. Cool. You still got room for luggage. You still got room for stuff. Right. I think I like that better than the convertible. And all C7s have that now, right? All coupes are like that. Yeah. I agree. I've, I've figured why you might as well be in a convertible as well, yeah. right? So retain the, the functionality of the coupe. We're in California. <laughs> you know, it's funny. The car business is like the restaurant business now. <laughs> if you don't have an A in the window or an A+, plus, you're out of business. Nobody eats there. Yeah, you you know, know? We see that in the aftermarket a lot. Yeah. Companies come and go after a few years. Yeah. So I'm very grateful and proud to be able to keep doing this after yeah. so many years. About three seconds to 60. <laughs> yeah, 2.7 in the automatic. Wow. You see, I want to put it in eight. Yeah, there's not much there. <laughs> so at 70 miles, at 69 miles an hour in eighth gear, you are turning 1600 RPM. So you're probably looking at what? 24, 25 miles per gallon? Yeah, yep. It's a green car. It's amazing. Yeah, under 100K, 25 miles a gallon, five year warranty. Yeah. <laughs> 200 mile an hour car. What rear end ratio do you run with this automatic? You know, it's man? a 273. Wow. Well, with an eight speed, yeah, right. What a great car this is. Pete, thank you very much. Thank, thank you. your dad for me, you know. As Absolutely. I said, you met his dad earlier. Great guy, still involved with the company, obviously. Every day. Yeah, and, uh, and now his son is kind of running the show. So it's, uh, it's good to see the heritage is in good hands. But boy, what, a, what an amazing car this is. And the fact that it's all factory warranty, that's the amazing part to me. You mm -hmm. know, because a lot of people tell you if I get this much horsepower or whatever, but the fact that they actually certify it and you get a guarantee, that's, uh, 
That's pretty good. There's no better performance bargain than a Corvette, and God, for about another what? If what? If you didn't want the wagon package, you could just do the mechanical upgrade. Yeah, for 18k over the cost. About 18,000, which is uh, seems like an awful lot of money when you except you realize an exhaust system for Ford GT is 10,000, so you're getting a you know an extra hundred and something horsepower, and you've got more horsepower than Lamborghini or Pagani or any of those, and in a bulletproof car, so. Peter, thank you very Good much. Stuff. Thanks, Jay. Cool. See you guys next week. Let me know what you think of the Aero Wagon package. I can't wait for the comments. <laughs>